Hi there, so today we're learning how to make dynamic footstep sound in UE5. Let's go. So we're inside UE5 and let's first demonstrate what we're going to end up with at the end of this tutorial. So when we start the game, you can see that there are three blocks, uh, each having its own uh, material. And you can hear that when we are working on the floor there, it's making a basic footstep sound, but as soon as we go on the gray one, it's making the same sound, but when we go on the green one, it's like we were working on grass, and when we go on the white one, it's like we are working on snow. So that's the, the purpose of this tutorial, making dynamic sound depending on, on the material we are working on. So let's see how we can build that. Before starting, I just want to say that I'm using assets, which are those sounds over there. Uh, so if you want to, to use the same sound as me, I'm just going to put them in the description below and you can get them if you want. Before starting making blueprints, I'm just going to explain how the system works. So as you can see, each of these cube has its own material, but when we go on those material, Oh, I've made a... it's not blue, it's, it's green, <laughs> by the way. But when we open the, the three of them, you can see that each material has a different physical material. For example, the green one has the grass one, the grass physical material. The, um, the black one has the rock one, and the white one has the snow one. And when we open those physical material, you can see uh, all those parameters there, they are useless for us. We do not use them for our system. Uh, but this one over there is important. That's the surface type. And this is the one that uh, decides what sound is playing at the, uh, at the end. And uh, if I open the grass one, you can see that it's a grass surface type. So the first step is to create those uh, custom surface type and then assign them to those materials. So that's what we are going to do first. So first step is to create the, the surface type. So for that, we just need to go inside the project settings and inside the, the physics windows. And then when we scroll at the bottom of the page, you can see that there are a list of surface type over there. So as you can see, uh, the one that we have seen earlier I and if you want to add a new one you can add them in the list below so let's say we have created all the surface type we want so now we just need to create the physical materials that we are going to assign to our materials for that we just need to go onto physics and physical ma physical material based on the physical material and let's Oops. Let's start with the, the rock one. As I said earlier, we just need to change the surface type of there. For this one, it's going to be rock. And we just need to create the two remaining, which is the grass. With a grass surface type. And the snow. with the snow surface type. So our physics setup is done. Uh, we can now create the blueprint that will trigger the, um, the sound depending on the, the surface type of the, the material we are working on. Uh, for that, we are going to use an Anim Notify blueprint, which is a type of blueprint which is placed uh, into the animation and it will be played at a specific time in the animation, for example, if we take the, the run animation of the mannequin, you can see there that I've placed different anim notify each time the, um, the mannequin is uh, stepping on the ground there. So uh, let's create this, this blueprint.
it will be based on anim notify and it's for it play footstep sound so when we open it you can see that there is no even graph there is just a free function that we can override uh, we are going to override this one which will be the one that is triggered when the the anim notify is reached during the animation first we need to know which type of surface type we are working on for that we are going to do a line trace from the hip of the character straight to the ground to know the, the surface type of the material. For that, we can use a line trace by channel. For the end location, we can still use this actor location, but we are going to uh, offset the on the z axis so that it hits the ground. So we are going to make a vector. We keep the X and the Y the same, but for the Z, we can subtract by, let's say, let's test 500. I think it will hit the ground. It depends on the, um, the origin location of the actor, but for this character, I think 500 is enough. And we are going to ignore the owner so that it can the line trace can go through the character and hit the ground or the the thing that we are stepping on. So that's it for the line trace. We first We check if we've got a hit. If there is no hit, we can return directly and no, no sound will play. But if there is a hit, we can take the hit and break it to get all the data from the hit. And what we're going to do, it is, it is to spawn a sound, let's say spawn attach so that the, the stepping sound follow the character we're going to attach it to the mesh comp which is the mesh of the owner character so this is uh, this mesh over there in our case for the sound we just need to get the surface type from the hit and we are going to do a select that we are going to impute in the sound impute. And we are going to select which sound to play depending on the surface type we've hit. And so by default, let's say that we play the rock step. For the rock, of course, it will be the rock step. For the grass, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. It's kind of obvious, but it will be snow for the snow. So we are now playing the sound, the right sound, depending on the surface type. Another thing we can do is to control the volume multiplier there, depending on the speed of the character, so that when the, the character is working slowly, the sound will play quiet. And when the character is running very fast, the sound will play uh, louder. So for that, we can use the velocity of our owner character. And we can take the vector length so that we got the, the row velocity from the, the velocity vector because the vector there uh, contains a direction data. Whereas this is just the, the raw value, which is an amount. And we are going to map the speed to 
to the 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 volume multiplier there. Let's clean all these nodes a bit. Even though it's not really necessary. But how does this mapping works? Uh, the two uh, input over there will be the range of the speed. So let's say the speed will be from 0 to 700. Uh, not even, yeah, 500 maybe. And the, um, the two inputs over there are the range uh, from the output. So for the volume multiplier. So we want our volume multiplier to be um, between 0 and 1. So if we put 1 there, it means that when the speed will be at 500, the volume multiplier will be at 1. And is the speed will be um, between 0 and 500, it will map uh, between uh, 0 and 1. It will, when it will be uh, at the half of the of 500, which is uh, 250, well, it, it will be uh, 0 0.5 uh, for the output. We can even multiply this value by um, a multiplier which will be exposed uh, at the anim notify uh, by that I mean when we click on that you can see that there is two parameters over there and those two parameters are the same as the one we've just defined over there so when we are going to place our newly created anim notify, this variable will be exposed to, and we will be able to change it. Uh, let's say by default we want a value of 0 0.5. Another thing we can do, it depends on if you are using uh, the sensory system, but we can report the noise event so that if we are using any AI with um, a sensory component what it will detect it will hear the sound and it will react to it um, but it's not really necessary and we don't really need it in our case and this break it is not even necessary I thought so but no so that's it for this anim notify we can now test it on by placing it onto the animation we can remove those old ones there and we can so the, this is the one we've just created and as you can see the, the variable that we have defined is exposed over there by default we want this value so we will not modify it so let's see we need to play the sound just as the when the character is stepping on the ground. To duplicate the anim notify there, I'm just uh, copy and pasting using uh, Control C and Control V. There we go. Let's remove this one. And the last one there. So here, as you can see, there is two track. It's really um, a good practice to to use uh, separate tracks when we are uh, making different things. For example, the, here the the first track is for the the synchronization of the step between animation. Those those things over there. And the second track is for our anim notify. So let's go back into our scene and see if it is working or not. So it seems to be working on the, the rock. And as we step to different material, a different sound is playing, which is what we wanted. So it works. That's it for this tutorial. Uh, if you liked it, you can thumbs up. 
subscribe or share the video to support me. Uh, if you didn't like it, you can tell me in the comment why, so that I will try to improve. Uh, and that's it for me. So see you another time. Bye.